Hey guys, Justin here from Barbell Kings. Today we're going to talk about recovery and uh, what the, the best way for you to handle uh, the rest after your workouts is. Uh, I guess the uh, the frequency in which you train, you got you really got to put uh, the same amount of effort into uh, your recovery and the, the catabolic portion of you know catabolic versus anabolic. If you're, you're breaking your muscles down constantly, you're uh, you're actually going to go you're going to go in the wrong direction if you don't give your body time to recover. So how do we make the most out of that recovery? How do we get, uh, you know, how do we how do we recover most efficiently? And uh, there's all kinds of methods in training. And I mean, you'll hear foam rolling and massaging and uh, acupuncture and chiropractors and you know all kinds of you know icing and you know there's there's hundreds and hundreds of ways that people have come up with to try and reduce uh, muscle soreness. So I'm going to go ahead and go over uh, some of the things that I found that are best. Uh, why and uh, you know maybe share some stories with you uh, early on in well I guess I'll start with stretching let's start with stretching guys <laughs> uh, stretching I think is a, is a real important part it's uh, probably I mean it's real underrated what happens a lot with the uh, the tendons and ligaments is they get uh, they get uh, they, they lose elasticity uh, from heavy weight training and especially if you're not going through the motions at a, in a full you know if you're not going through weight lifting a full range of motion Studies have shown that uh, going through the motion and like you know, you know, following through a, a full range of motion is actually better for uh, your flexibility than static stretching. But nonetheless, uh, stretching is, is real important, and you should never stretch cold. That's a, a big, like, big problem I see a lot of times is uh, people go to the gym and when they get to the gym they start stretching. It's fucking stupid. You shouldn't do that. Uh, if anything, you're gonna put yourself more at risk for injury doing doing that. So it's usually I would say it's always best to do it after your workout. Or what I'll do, like what I'm doing right now on my, my, my rest day, is going for a walk, a uh, two mile walk. When I get on my walk, I'll do 30 minutes of yoga, you know, some, you know, some, which is like, you know, like a light stretch. Uh, the next thing that a lot of people do um, is, you know, soft tissue work, like massages and things like that. I'll give you a, a quick story, because I, I love massages. Uh, I think they're, they're probably some of the, like, uh, I'll give you the story. When I was in my early 20s. Uh, I was lifting real heavy, I was getting real strong, getting real big, eating a whole lot of food, having a great time. But I never I never took recovery serious, like at all. I didn't even know that there was such a thing. You know, I would work out my three days a week. Man, every time I try to film a video, I swear there's a fucking train. We're gonna have to edit like four minutes out of this. Alright, pause for intermission. Whoop, trying to get hit by a car. Anyway, as I, as I was as I was trying to say there, uh, I was I was you know I was in my early 20s and I'm lifting a whole lot and I'm getting a whole lot stronger, but I wasn't taking care of myself recovery wise. It, I mean, I had rest days, but I didn't do anything on my rest days. I didn't know. I mean, I figured a rest day was just stay at home, you know, sit on the couch, watch TV, enjoy you know, let your muscles heal. I figured I thought that was the best way. And uh, I had a friend, she was a masseuse, and she uh, she was like, you should really start getting massages. And I was like, the fuck do I need a massage for, you know? And she's like, well, your muscles, you know, she's like feeling me all up. And I'm thinking she's flirting with me. She's like, your muscles are all tight. You know, this is terrible, blah, blah, blah. And eventually she convinced me, and I'm like, all right, sure, let's do it. So I go get the massage. I felt great afterward. You know, my body felt real relaxed and not tense. And I didn't even realize I was tense until after I got the massage. And I was like, wow, this feels fucking great. And then the next day, I went into the gym, and I, I can't tell you it was a it was a world of difference we went i mean I, I was hitting i felt like i was hitting prs everything felt smoother everything felt better and i was like oh oh all right this is something i should do so since then i've i've programmed them pretty regularly uh into my like it's just it's like part of my training you know, like every four weeks you know oh let's time to get a massage let's loosen everything up let's make sure everything's uh you know not tight and stuff like that one of the i guess what i should have mentioned is the start of this video yeah. You know, I'll save it for later. After uh, after that, you can go into like you could do foam rolling. You could do, I mean that foam rolling is pretty much the same as massage. And the idea that it's you know soft tissue work. You you're you're working the the soft tissue of the muscles. The real I guess the real meat and potatoes of recovery. How to get the absolute most out of your recovery. You know the stuff that that you've been waiting for this whole video probably to figure out. Justin, how do I recover faster? My body hurts. One, you really shouldn't be training more than three, four times a week. Uh, I've read a, I mean, even like, that goes back to Olympic weightlifters, um, powerlifters. Uh, I mean, you guys that are setting world records and professionals aren't, aren't, they're not training, you know, six days a week for 17 hours a day. It's just fucking, it's just dumb. You don't do that. Your body needs time to recover. Even, 
I mean, I'm talking about even the greatest bodybuilders of all time only train four days a week. You know, some Ed Cohen, some of the greatest powerlifters only train three days a week. You know, if, if these guys are, are doing that, then obviously you don't really, you don't need to be doing more than that. If anything, you're probably hurting yourself by overworking. The, uh, I guess the two, two top tier things that you need are nutrition and sleep. And I could talk to you all day about nutrition because diet is super fucking crazy. And, uh, I mean, but as long as you make sure you're at this, you know, there'll be some self research or maybe I'll have to do a video on diet sometime. But you, uh, you got to make sure you're getting enough protein, make sure you're eating, eating right first, making sure you're getting enough sleep. Those are your two, two most important things. Following that, you need active recovery. Active recovery, the, the way your body works, right? So you get a cut on your finger, red blood cells rush to the cut to make a clot and begin the healing process. Your body's muscles work the exact same way. Not, I mean, maybe it's not the exact same way, they're not fucking bleeding. But they break down and they need red blood cells to uh, repair the muscle tissue. Well, how do I get red blood cells to my muscle tissue? Real easy. Light weights, uh, full range of motion. So this walk that I'm doing right now, I'm pumping blood through my body. Pumping blood through my body. Getting those red blood cells the places they need to be so that they can recover. So my muscles can recover. Real easy. It doesn't have to be anything hard. You can do, you know, 10 minutes on a bike. You could do this, you know, a light walk. You could do a prowler. Old school powerlifters, even uh, West Side Barbell, if anybody's familiar with Westside Barbell, they, they program uh, speed lifts. You can, I mean, that's real debatable. Speed lifts are even fucking, there's really no point to speed lifts. You don't get, you don't lift faster by using light weights to try and lift faster. But what you, what you are doing is working your, those muscles through the full range of motion with a light weight. That's gonna increase your recovery. So you could go like heavy, then you go light with the, the speed work. Oh, I got some traffic. You go heavy, and then you go light with the speed work, and you can get uh, get get recovered faster, so you can come right back to it. Uh, two cars on this road. That never happens. Oh, lots of cars. We're gonna wait for traffic now. And another truck. All right, right, so let's uh, cover the basics again. Uh, nutrition, sleep, active recovery. Stretching is important. Massages could definitely help. Icing. So uh, here's a, the thing about icing. Um, most, like if you, scientifically, if you look at icing or elevating uh, to reduce muscle soreness, it's not gonna work. Uh, scientifically, there's no, absolutely no benefit. You're, you're, if anything, all you're doing is numbing the nerve endings in the muscles so that you don't feel the pain. But you're not recovering. You're not healing. Um, on top of that, uh, oh, anti-inflammatory drugs. So say you, you're real sore, you take ibuprofen. Now you're limiting your body's ability. You're inhibiting your body's ability to repair the muscles. Again, you're just stopping the nerves from you know feeling it, but you're not recovering. Um, however, there are plenty of people out there that use you know the chirotherapy or icing or ice baths and all that kind of crazy stuff to you know to feel better and they'll slur by it up and down um the one of the i guess one of the coolest things you'll ever learn in your whole life 84 percent of placebos work uh the human mind is fucking crazy and if you believe something works chances are it'll work um but scientifically it shouldn't work let's see is there anything else i need to recover oh uh, supplements, I guess uh, magnesium can help with uh, muscle soreness and calcium can help a whole lot too. Uh, I always swear by calcium being the best thing for sore muscles, or excuse me, chocolate milk being the best thing for sore muscles, because chocolate milk is full of calcium and sugars, and the sugars help the calcium get to the muscles faster. When you lift weights, uh, when you, you know, contract muscles, blood and nitric oxide are rust rushed into the, the muscle fibers. However, calcium is depleted from the uh, muscle fibers when doing your activities or your exercises or whatever the fuck it is you're doing. Well, that calcium depletion is a big part of soreness. So calcium and magnesium are two things that can help you, you know, get over that muscle soreness. Ultimately, if you're tracking your progress and you're going backwards or you're not making progress, there's a huge chance that it's probably because you're not recovering enough. All right, I think that's my lesson for today. Take care, guys.